morning, Rapture Radio Ministries family, our guests, and Zoom participants. We give all honor and glory to God, and we like to welcome you to our Sunday morning worship experience. I am Deacon Linda Brown, and it is my pleasure and honor to be the worship leader today. Now it's time for this word through scripture. Please stand. Amen. Our first scripture is Exodus 3, 14. God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. Mark 14, 62 says, I am, said Jesus, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. First Peter 2, 24 says, He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness by his wounds you have been healed i'm gonna say that again <clears throat> he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins to sins means we have more than one and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. Amen. Psalm 107, 20 says, he sent out his word and healed them. Amen. Amen. The word of God is already blessed. Amen. Our Sunday Zoom information, come join us on Sunday mornings. 8.45 a.m. for our prayer time. Prayer time is open to all. 9 o'clock a.m. is our worship service. Our Zoom information, 787-756-4573. And the code is 197-386. Don't forget to invite your friends and loved ones to join us Sunday mornings Follow us on our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel, RRM TV. Amen. Hallelujah. I want, I love how God orchestrates things and we don't even know it. He's working behind the scenes and we don't even recognize it. And sometimes we get perplexed and troubled in our souls and in our minds thinking that things should be working another way. But God says, let me be. Let me be who I am to you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father, for another day, another opportunity to stand before your people. God, to minister your word, oh God, as you've given it to me. Father, thank you for another day, another hour, another minute that we get to listen and sit under the sound of a voice that has been given to your speaker. Father, Lord, we thank you and we need you right now in the midst of us, oh God. Whatever may be going on in each individual's life, Father, we ask right now that they let you be who you are in their lives. Lord, we need to feel your presence today. And the world seems to be so complex and, and, and going crazy all around us. But God, we trust you to be who you are. We trust you to be who we, you are in our lives. And Father, as the spirit 
minister to your people today. Father, help me to decrease while you increase and minister your word in the name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. 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 Let's give God a hand praise this morning. This is not a funeral. It's a rejoicing and a worship praise service. Amen. So as we look around us each and every day, sometimes we're not touched personally, but we're touched by other people. But we can still give God praise when things come our way that doesn't seem like it should be. But let me tell you one thing, we're not exempt. Just because we serve God and we love God and we are Christians, we live in a sinful world, a fallen world. We have bodies that are made of clay and they will break down. We have troubles all in the land and it will happen. It's said in God's word that we will, Jesus said we will have trouble, but just know that I am, amen? amen. I am. And so this week there were two songs that I had to lean on the first song was by by um i can't think of his name right now anthony anthony brown and group therapy it was um speak your name speak your name that was the first song that kept going over and over and over in my head and then the next song was i am by jason nelson I was like, okay, these, these are my go-to songs. And so as I began, it would go over and over. And for the, for the last couple of weeks, Anthony Brown was ringing in my head, that song, uh, Speak Your Name. And it kept ringing and ringing and ringing. And I, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a song person, so I didn't pay it no mind. I just went along with the song, not knowing it was preparing me to speak your name. And so as we begin to go through the trauma on Monday night, and uh, as most of you have heard already that we stayed in the ER for 14 hours because they did not have a bed for him. He was in excruciating pain. And he was tossing and turning. And then let me tell you, they gave him three medications and it didn't touch him. Oxycodone, they gave him uh, fentanyl, they gave him Tylenol, and the nurse said, I don't understand. This is not working. We're like, no, but we want you to hurry up and get him in this room. Maybe, you know, they'll do something. So after all of that, they got him in the room, um, you know, and it, it, the pain started to subside. He started feeling a little better. But as a, they were, I want to tell you something about, I know we hear horror stories about uh, title health, but God sent angels, and everybody was so nice and so accommodating, asking us if we needed anything, if he needed anything, that, you know, let him know. Everybody was so accommodating, even the ER doctor, and I'm not sure if I uh, get his name right, but he was excellent. And when they'd done the x-rays and they'd done the, the scans and, the, and they said, he just knew it was, he, he knew it was a gallbladder. He says, I, it, it's got to be a gallbladder. The way you're acting, it's a gallbladder. But when the, the scan came back, it was not a gallbladder, it was pancreatitis, pancreatitis, and it was a mass that they saw on the head of the pancreas. Well, right away, you know, how when you get bad news, you got, how many times did I tell you when I got bad news, I had to get myself together. So he got the bad news and it did, the, the numbers don't look good. He says, I, I just, I don't, I'm gonna tell you the worst. It may not be, but I'm going to tell you the worst. And it looks like cancer. He says, but I'm going to, you know, we're going to further, we're going to treat your pain first, and then we're going to talk. We're going to address each issue as we come, come up against it. So that's what they did. They, you know, they, they addressed the pain, got him, in, got him under control. And then they're starting to do the test uh, about whether that mass that they see is malignant or if it's benign. And so when you gave him, you know when you get bad news, it's like he, his, his countenance like went down. And so I was standing over, oh, I was standing right next to him because I, you know, I've been, I've been this road before, right? So I was listening very intentively. What are you saying? And how are you saying it? What he was saying was very good. And so uh, I got up from my chair because I was sitting right next to him. I got from my chair and I put my hand 
on his head like this. And I said, okay. I just heard the report. I heard the facts, but I know the truth. And the truth says you are healed by the name of Jesus. You are healed. And cancer dry up from the root in the name of Jesus. And if it's not so, we're going to deal with it because God got something else in mind. Every time we pray, you got to remember something too. Every time we pray for things, it may not happen the way we want it to happen, but I am. I want y'all to remember that. It's not by coincidence that I was to speak this first Sunday about this topic, but because I, I got to teach you something this morning about who God is. The great I am means, it, th those words mean something. And I want to break that down to you today. They mean something to us. Not just saying I'm I am. They mean, I am is a powerful little two words. And so today I just want to talk about the, that the God who is I am. And so on Tuesday, we're waiting for the results to come back. And he, he'll be going back to the doctor on Tuesday to get the results. And whether they're favorable to us or whether they're not, he's still I am. He's still I am. I remember when I got the diagnosis, I said, God, if I got to go through this, don't let me go through with pain and trouble and let me be the minimum. And that's what he did. I had the minimum pain. I had the minimum things because I asked God to help me. And because simply I know who he is and what he can do. I don't count nothing out because he is the great I am. Amen. Amen. Got to remember that. I don't know what's coming you all's way in your life, but I, you got to remember who God is. He is the great I am. So we're going to talk about that just for a little bit. That's why we switched, because when you get finished listening to the, the, the message, of the teaching about I am, you'll be able to take communion for real. You understand for real. So who is God? Who is the God that says I am? Who is the God who is? I am. The question is rolling around in many people's heads today. And I was talking to my nephew, which just came the doctor, and he said, you know, you know, Aunt Shane, they call me Aunt Shane, you, you know, that's hard for, for edu the highly educated people to believe. I say, yeah, they ain't got to believe it, but it's true. And so it's rolling around in so many people's heads today of who is God? Who is this? God that we're talking about. Well, let me start from the very beginning. After the fall, after the fall of man in, in Genesis, we find that mankind no longer had direct access to him one-on-one. -on -one. No longer could they have one-on-one -on -one access to God. Now, and now back in, the, in paradise, which was in the garden, God came down and talked to Adam and Eve personally. Now, my husband was telling me that the other day he heard uh, on the radio that someone said that God came down physically and walked with Adam and Eve and talked to them. I said, I have not seen that in the scripture, but I know God is a spirit and I know spirits can come down and talk. So I don't know about whether God was in human form or whether he was a spirit talking to Adam and Eve, but I don't even care about that. All I know is that God will talk to you and I. Amen? Amen. He'll talk to you and you can listen to him and he will speak. So I don't know what form he was speaking to in Adam and Eve, but I know that he directly talked to Adam and Eve. But after they fell, after they sinned, he was no longer able to talk to them directly. So here comes Moses. Moses was after the fall, way after the fall. Because the children of Israel had disobeyed God so much, he allowed them to go into captivity. 
And they stayed there 400 years. But here comes the baby Moses. I'm talking about I am. He says, I got a plan. But I'm going to let you stew in this mess for a little while because you got to know who I am. And so as they begin to cry out, God heard their voice. And he raised up this baby called Moses. So Moses was the one in Exodus 3.14, as we talk about our first scripture. In Exodus 3.14, God states his own name for the very first time. God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said this. Say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. Well, they didn't understand that. They only knew what Moses was going to tell them. The name I am, let me tell you about the name I am. It is how God chose to introduce himself. When God said I am who I am and repeated it twice, I am. He is stating his name, number one, who he is, which is Lord. His name forever will be the Lord. And he is also reflecting on who he is, period. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is the beginning and he is the end. There is period. You know how you have to put a period at the end of the sentence because you're finished with that sentence? Well, there is no comma and no adjective, a jump, a, a adjective to add on to that period. He says, period, I am. But you got to remember, and when you get some things going on in your life, you got to put a period at the end of this mess, at the end of your troubles and trials and tribulations, put a period and say, that's it. That's what I had to say on Monday, Tuesday. I am, period. I am, period. This is all that I hear. I am, period. Because he is truth, he is the absolute I am. I am speaks to him being all powerful. It speaks to him being all knowing. It speaks to him being everything, everywhere. God has not forgotten about you. You may think he has. But he has not forgotten about you because he's everywhere all the time. So when you put a period behind I am, just think about God is looking down. He's helping me out and I'm going to trust him. God is constant and is in the past. He's in the present and he's certainly in our future. I'm looking forward to a great future. Not only is heaven in my view, but heaven here on earth is also in my view. You got to think about, I don't still want heaven when I get to heaven. I want heaven right here. So God said, if I can have heaven here, then I'm going to have joy. I'm going to have peace. I'm going to have happiness, but I'm also going to have some trouble. But guess what? I am. I am. God is constant. He doesn't change. Now this baffles some people. Some people, it's just like, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I remember my husband was saying to the doctor, and, and you know, he's a thinker. Thinkers have to analyze things. They have to make sure that everything lines up. But with God, everything don't line up. You got to trust him. I remember saying to the doctor, he says, can this be fixed? And the doctor said, oh, yeah, it can be fixed. He said, but we got to go through some things. We got to make sure, you know, we, you got to go through all the tests and everything, but it can be fixed. And then one of the, the, the doctors came in, Dr. Ch Dr. Uh, Chen was one of his, was, was one of his brother's doctor. Well, you know, anxiety went up, right? Because his brother didn't live. And I said, the devil is a liar. And he told him, he said, my husband says, am I going to live? I said, wait, hold up. Don't be speaking that because you shall live. You will not die to declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living. Hold up. Put that thought back. Put it under your feet because I'm going to live. 
as I told as, as I told Satan when I was attacked, I said, I'm going to live either here or I'm going to live in heaven. Now, which one would you, which one would you rather for me to do? Because I'm going to live. I don't know about you, but I'm going to live. I'm going to live here. I'm going to live. So that's what you have. I'm trying to tell you to speak God's word. This is all about God's word. Speak his word. And so this baffles people many times when we talk about who God is. And, 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 and this baffles us because we live in a time line of life. We're here on earth and it has time limits. But God goes beyond all our earthly patterns. Aren't you glad that he's God and we aren't? Yes. Because if we were, we messed things up. We already have. So God goes beyond all earthly patterns. And why? Because he's God. Did you ever notice you didn't make yourself? Excuse me. Did you ever, did you ever notice you didn't grow your own hair? Did you ever notice that? Do you ever notice the things that you did not do that God has done? If you would take time to just look at the pictures of, of your body, how God made it. He took time to put things in certain places. Did you do that? That's I am. These are, there are many things about him that we will never understand, y'all. You can't work it out every time. And as I said to my husband, the thinker, you can't always go by what you see because it's not always what it is. There are many things about him that we will never understand. And even when we get to glory, maybe it'll be explained and maybe not. I don't really care because I'm in heaven. I don't even care what happened on the earth to me. But I want to see his face, face to face. And so as I talked about the God who is I am, there's three points. You know, I like the points, and I got them listed. I got them listed on the board. There are three points that I, I, I would, I'm going to discuss this morning. And if you can see the board, it's up there. If not, you can write it down. I didn't have space to put it in the program this morning because we're, we, we do communion, and our communion program is a little long. Don't give me much space. But the first point that I want to talk about is I am who I am. I am who, if you're writing, I'll slow down just a second. I am who I am. Point number two is Jesus is God. Then we hit the last point. His word heals. His word heals. So when we talk about I am who I am is the name by which God wishes to be known and is also the name that he wishes to be worshipped by. He told Israel, I am. I am who I am is the name that expresses his character. As the dependable, his character is dependable. See, some of us are not dependable. But God says, I am dependable. That's my character. And faithful. God who desires the full trust of his people. He says, trust me because I am. I've told you over and over in my word, I am. Therefore, he gave himself a name that describes all his full existence. His plan, his purpose, his power, and his assurance all tied up into these two little words, I am. God was everything we need and everything that the, the, the children of Israel needed. He was not going to fall, he was not going to fail them, and he's not going to fall or fail us. So what that got to do with you and I? I heard the word, Pastor. I heard it many times, but something in my spirit, or something not in my spirit, but something in my heart, the mind, soul, mind, will, and emotions are up here. That's your heart. Something in my heart is not clicking. You know, sometimes we have to, we have to get convinced. 
And so you would ask, well, what's that got to do with me if Jesus says, if God says, I am, I will not fail you. I won't let you down. But, 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 Pastor, you know, uh, there have been so many times in my life that I've gone to people and I've, I've confided in them and, and, and I've looked for help and they let me down. But God says, I'm not them. I'm not who you think they are. They are just like you. They're human. They have little problems, big problems, just like you. But guess what? I am. You can trust me. But how can I trust you, God? Because I'll show you every time that you call my name. Something happens in the room. Our hands go up. And we give him praise. Every time something happens. Every time I call his name, something happens. And so for generations to follow, this, this interaction with God and Moses, as we talked about earlier, was revealed. But then along, we already know the story. I don't have to go through the story. The Israelites got delivered and they came out, you know, and Moses was to lead them in the promised land. He didn't get there because of his disobedience and Joshua had to take over. I, we don't need to go through that. You can read it. And if you've been in the Bible study any time, you know the story. Amen? 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 But I want to get to Jesus. Then comes Jesus. The Gospel of John tells us that on a day when the Pharisees were questioning the power and authority of the teaching of Jesus, they actually accused him of being a demon possessed. Now, wait a minute. Two things can't live. You can't have dark and light living together. They already saw that light, Jesus was the light, but they called him the dark. Impossible. They didn't understand. I am. When Jesus took on God's holy title as his own, now he's referring to himself as I am. He was stating the modern equivalent of what God told Moses who he was saying, I am God. He did this repeatedly over the course. Jesus did this repeatedly over the course of his ministry. He let them know who I am. And so that brings us to our second scripture, which is Mark 14, 60, Mark 14, 6, 62. And it says, I am, said Jesus, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. As well as it is in other verses, there, he also talks about that, like John in verse uh, John chapter 18, verses 5 and 6, and John chapter 8, verse 24, also John chapter 8, verse 28. He also talks about the same thing of who he is. So while you may not find the expression, I am in the New Testament, the Gospels, the four Gospels, you will certainly find the equivalent of him saying, I am referring back to the Old Testament when he first appeared to Adam and Eve, I am. And so Jesus, which gets to my second point, Jesus is God. Don't ever forget that Jesus is God. God in the flesh came down from heaven so that we might have an example on how to live life here in this sinful world. Not only did he come down so that we might have life and have it more abundantly, but he also came down to save the sinner. We all were sinners. I don't know about you. You might think you were born perfect, but you were not. You were born in a world of sin. And so he came down because every generation past Adam were born in sin. So he came down so that we might be saved. He says, I'm here if you want me, because I am, if you want me. So Jesus is God. His 
part of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but he's all wrapped up into one. This brings us to the part that Jesus was God. First Peter 24 says, here we are with the next scripture. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross. You heard that this morning when Deacon Lynn read that. It goes on to say, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. You don't have to live in your mess. He says, by his wounds, you have been healed. If Jesus had not willingly endured unjust suffering, he didn't, he didn't sin. He knew no sin. But he bored unwillingly, uh, willingly uh, unjust suffering. We would, if he didn't do that, we would have to have remained in sin and be lost. You understand this, y'all? You would go to hell straight. From, from, from death to hell, thank God for the middleman. Amen? Instead, Jesus bore or carried our sins on the cross. He actually died in order to pay the penalty for our sinful actions. Now, that doesn't give us a license to sin, y'all. Or that doesn't give us a license to practice sin, because we're going to sing by word, thought, or deed each day. But it doesn't give us a license to practice sin. If you're practicing, stop it. You're out of the will of God. Don't practice. Yeah, we're going to sin. We're going to say stuff that ain't right. We're going to look the wrong way. We're going to roll our eyes. We're going to talk about people. We're going to act unseemly. That's flesh. This mess flaring up. But just know, don't, don't live there. Don't make it a habit. Don't make it a habit of being a liar. Don't make it a habit of being a cheater. Don't make it a habit of living the wrong way. Don't live there. At the end of the day, say, God, whatever I've done that's displeasing to your sight, forgive me. Help me to get it right. Help me not to repeat my mistake that I did yesterday. Help me, God. That's what we need to do. But like me, sometimes I get so tired, I just go to bed and say, you know, thank you, Lord. Come on, y'all. It's real. It's real. We don't always get on our knees at, at, at nighttime. Sometimes I'm so exhausted, I was like, Phew, the bed is the best thing I can see. And when I get in the bed, I said, Lord, I thank you for this day. And God bless each and every one, all, everybody that, that, that's under, under our sound of our voice. God, touch them. And I'm... I'm Sleep. Sleep. Going to sleep. My husband said I'm snoring. Gone. Gone. But I don't forget when I get up on uh, in the morning and say, hey, thank you, Lord. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning. And then I get, I get to tantalize him. Get up. It's time to get up. <laughs> I just love it. Love it. But God is good. It's wonderful. Wonderful God that we serve. So let's get back to our scripture. Let's get back to Jesus is God. As believers, we are free from the price of our own sin and from the power of sin to poison, to, to poison our thoughts. Listen, y'all, you don't. You can think it, but you don't have to do it. First thing comes is your thoughts. I think I don't like her. I don't like her. Okay, what are you going to do about it? Well, I think I'm going to uh, call her out and cuss her out because I don't like her. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Your thoughts said, but your body and your mouth should say, Lord, forgive me, and I'm going to pray for her. But you don't know what she's done to me. It does not matter. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. I, I'm reminded, and I'm, I'm going to pick on my daughter-in-law. I'm reminded of she has a neighbor that's unseemly. And how many know, how many, how many know that I don't care how much Jesus we got? That she cuts in. 
it cuts in. And so we have to remind ourselves that, okay, this is a test. I got this crazy neighbor. There's probably a witch anyway. But I know that in between the witch and Jesus, I got the power. I got the power. So when the neighbor comes out the house, she hurry up and comes out the house so you don't have to talk to him. That's okay. That's all right. And then my little grandson go, hi. <laughs> and don't be going, shut up, boy. <laughs> don't talk to her. <laughs> he go, hi, how are you? Hush. <laughs> That's what we do. That's what we do. But we, when we get ourselves together, we go back and say, Lord, touch her in the name of Jesus. Touch her mind. In the meantime, you keep her over here, and I'm going to stay right here. Amen? Amen. That's what you got to do. You can't be hating people. Don't hate people. Just pray for them. Pray for them. Don't hate them. Pray for them. They need help. They're not where you are. They may not even know what you know, but you know better. You know the great I am. And so, so... When we talk about as believers, we are free from the price of our own sin and from the power of sin to poison our choices. We do have choices. Dodie has a choice on whether she wants to talk to that neighbor or not. She don't want to talk to her right now, y'all. <laughs> but she has a choice. We all have choices. We do. And the Holy Spirit helps us with our choices. We allow it because who he is, the great I am. The great I am. Now, thanks to Jesus' suffering, Christians can live righteously. We can live righteous. That means right standing with the word. Not perfect, but right standing. We don't have to sin. We make a choice to sin. We are free to make the right choices and please and honor our God. Think about when you're doing something wrong and God is looking down at you. He's like, well, nobody sees me. Yeah, somebody does. God is looking down and saying, mm-mm, mm-mm, that's not right. And so when we get to verse 24 of 1 Peter, that's our next scripture. When we get to verse 4, uh, verse 24 of 1 Peter, I like what it ends with. It ends with an Old Testament scripture coming from Isaiah 53 and 5. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Now we talked about transgressions and iniquities. We talked about the things that you really meant to do, that you plan to do. That's your iniquities. That's your like, you know what, I'm going to get her. That's what we plan to do. But trans transgressions are the things that, that we, we made a mistake. And like we, we, we didn't mean to do it. You, we really didn't mean to do that. But, trans, but, but when we get to iniquity, he says, I plan, to, I plan to hurt you. I plan to cut you out. I plan to hurt you. So, so Isaiah says, Jesus was, was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. It's in Jesus Christ that we have our peace. Thank God for Jesus Christ. And then it goes on to say, by his wounds, we are healed. A profound play on these words. That's what it is. As Christians, we have been healed from the penalty and power of sin by Christ's wounds. By his death in our place, by his suffering for our good, the wounds, the suffering of Jesus are the means by which Christians, us, you and I, are healed and forgiven by God for our sins. This all because of Jesus, that we are forgiven for our sins. Now, when we talk about this, this is why I wanna talk about this before communion. When we talk about Christ's wounds by his death, and we talk about his suffering, and that Jesus, Jesus uh, we are healed by those things. We are healed by his, by his wounds. This reference, get this, y'all. This is very important. I had to study this over and over. I go, wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you saying? This reference is not about physical conditions. Did y'all know that? Because we've been saying that for a long time wrong. 
We've been saying, by his stripes we are healed. You expect your flesh to be healed this morning. It's not. It's your spiritual. It is your spirit that's being healed. It, the reference is not about physical condition, but your spiritual destiny. Now I'm going to break that down a little bit more for you. Because that's confusing to me. I was like, what? Is, what? What? Now we've been saying by his stripes we are healed, you know. I said, well, what, what, where's the healing coming from? It, do you mean our flesh is healed? Well, let me break this down for you. With point three. His word healed. It's his word. I'm telling you, I had to study this over and over. Psalm 107.20 says, our last scripture, he sent out his word. Somebody say word. word. Say it again. Word. It's not the blood. It's not the body. It's not the bread. It's not the wine. Say that again. His what? Word. Heals us. Now, let me take you back. When the doctor said, it looks like cancer, Mr. Sampson, it really, the numbers are up. It really looks like cancer. What did I do? What did I say to him? What did I say? I said, we got, we got, we already heard the facts. We already heard the facts. But God's word said, God's word said, you heal. I didn't say God's flesh says you are healed. It says God's word. So what did I have to do? I had to go find some word. When I was diagnosed, I went home and found all the scriptures I could find on the word that said, I'm healed. Y'all got this? It's the word. When we say by his stripes we are healed, by his word we are healed. Speak the word. That's how you get your healing. Speak the word. Now this week we're going to start looking at some scriptures where it tells us that God said he's healed. You know, I'm going to have to go back to my I am book. They keep telling me, my kids keep telling me, Mommy, you need to get that book out. You need, to, you need to redo it. I'm going back to my book and talk about all the scriptures that says he's healed. I don't know how the healing's going to come. He may have to go through the process like I did. But I do know one thing. He's healed. Because why? Because when you speak the word, the word has power. It can move situations that you can't even move. When that word is spoken in the atmosphere, I believe the angels grabs hold of the word and starts to administer to the body. But wait a minute, you got to get your mind right. That's where it all starts. You got to get your mind right. God is faith at work. If you ain't got no faith, you can't talk about the word because the word is faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. There we go again, that word. There we go again. God is faith at work. Thankfully, God has not left us ignorant. Thank God for his 66 books that he's given us. He's not left us ignorant about himself. Instead, he has revealed himself to us through one we look at the sky. We look at the, how wonderful, beautiful it is this morning. That's God. Did you, did you order that sunshine? Did you bring the pass? As he told, as, as, as he told uh, 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 Moses, when Moses got a little perturbed with him, he said, you ain't doing none of this. When he told Jonah, you didn't do none of this. You didn't cause that tree to come up. You didn't do none of that. So by his creation, God has made himself known to us. Through the spirit, he has made himself known to us. Did you know that when you were born, you were born with a hole in your spirit? And until can tell you connect back to him. Then you become alive. 
Because when you are born, your spirit is dead. You remember your sin. When you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior, your spirit becomes alive. Wait, somebody said, wake up, spirit. Wake up, spirit. Wake up, wake up. Wake up. Not only does he show himself, as he says, strong as I am in the creation and our conscience, he has also given 66 books that the Israelites did not have. But, but here is what I like the best. He gave us his best, the son Jesus himself, wrapped up in, in, in clothes, in a, in, in a skin. He gave us him. So that we could have an example on how we are to live. Everything you need to know on how to live this life can be found in Jesus Christ. But what do we do? We, we get so lazy. And I often tell people this. Stop relying on what you heard from the preacher. All the time it ain't right. Stop relying on that. Go look it up. Go research it yourself. And if you don't understand it, get to someone that can break that word down. And we got so many commentators now of places that we can go. Dr. Jeremiah's book is wonderful. Go look it up. You don't have to be ignorant of his word. And so when things come, you can apply his word because you already know where to find it. But the best thing is to have it in your heart. Hide my word in your heart. That means that mine. Hide it in your mind so when you, when, when, you, when you don't have a Bible, you can speak the word. Speak the word of healing. Speak the word of, of progress. Speak it. Remember the word in the atmosphere has power. So this brings me to our, our last scripture, as I said, Psalms 107, 20. He sent out his word and healed them. The weakness of the body is the effect of sickness. Remember, I told you that you are made from the dust of the earth and you're going to break down. No matter, it's just a matter of time. Your organs are going to break down. They're not meant to last forever here on earth. Y'all understand that? So when you get sick, don't fall out and cry. Ah! What you need to do is you need to make sure that you're going to your doctor's appointments and making sure that you kept up on, your, on what's going on in your body. This is, this is something that, and I was telling my husband that the same thing, this is something that most men don't do. We, sometimes we have to force them to go to the doctor because they're so macho, I ain't nothing wrong with me, I'm okay. And you're dying all the time. Get yourself an appointment. Get to the doctor. Make your blood pressure check. Make sure your cholesterol is good. Make sure the things that are working the way they should be working. And then you can speak to the word. I'm telling you. It's better to be proactive than to wait till things happen. You know what the doctor told him? The doctor said, "Down that." And here's another thing: he blamed it on eating shrimp on Sunday that it caused him. Everybody was. He says, "I believe I got food poisoning. I ate those shrimp." I said, "Well, nobody else is sick. How come you sick? I don't know. I believe that done to me." <laughs> but I said, "You know what? God has a way of working things." And I told him yesterday, he said, I, was, I was saying, you want some shrimp? No, I don't want no shrimp. <laughs> I said, you better be glad them shrimp you think made you sick. The doctor said, here's the word they use. You are lucky, Mr. Samson, that you got here when you did. I said, he ain't lucky. He blessed. And he got, he got people around him with common sense. You getting up out here because you're hurting too bad, and I am not going to stay here no longer with you turning and twisting, and you are saying you're in so much pain, you're getting up out of here. So it's not luck. It's God warning us. Take the warnings. Don't be so ignorant that you don't listen to your body. So go get your checkups. Go make sure your high blood pressure, your blood pressure is where it's supposed to be. Make sure your kidneys are functioning right. When we get older, those things do flare up on us and not even older. Oh, look at the baby. Nova. She, she what? Three weeks, three months old yet. There are things that happen to us. Make sure you are following up with your doctor. That's what God gave him the knowledge for, to take care of us. 
And my daughter said, you ain't going nowhere because you got to live in your 90s. He's got, a, he's got an aunt that's 102. You got to live because God's got some work for you. You got to live. You got to live so I can bug you, for one thing. <laughs> you got to live. <laughs> and so this, 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 this weakness in our bodies, uh, it's, it's, it's going to happen. It is by the power and mercy of God that we recover from sickness. It's by the power. When we, that's why we give God praise and we say, thank you, Lord, when we recover from our illnesses. We thank God. We yeah, thank the doctors. Yeah, you you're wonderful. But I know it was God working through you. That's right. Because if it had not been for God, you wouldn't even have the knowledge, even though you think you don't need God. Wow. But we know different. Because yeah. we know the God who is I am. We know him. Oh, 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 it all oh, crisis miracles and cures that he done while he was teaching here on earth, healing diseases, doing miracles and wonderful work was all pointing to who he was and who we can believe in. We put too much trust in man. Put your trust in God. Yeah, you got to trust the doctors to give you the right diagnosis and, and medicine, but on the meantime, trust God. Amen? Amen. Remember who God is the great I am. He sent his word and heals souls, minds up here. That's why I said it's not the flesh that he's healing. You got to start with the mind. He sent his word up here so that we would change our minds about our situation. That's what I'm talking about. He sent the mind. He sent it up here. When you hear that bad news, he sent his word up here to heal us. That's what that's that's what he's saying. He sent his word, not physical. I'm gonna touch your body. He sent his word. Get in the word. The word is what heals. And so he sent his word to heal our souls, our minds. His word encourages us. His word converts and makes our mind holy so that we won't speak stupid stuff like he asked the doctor, Am I gonna live? Wait a minute, what did the word say? You shall live. See, we won't say stuff out of our mouth like that. Because we got the word of God in us that says, wait a minute. I'm not going, I might think that, but I'm not going to say that. Even in common cases of recovery from sickness, God, in his preference speaking, he says, it's done. Because I am. Just let me be who I am. Get out of the way. Get in my word. Is that Ezekiel said, eat the word? That's what he's saying. Morning, noon, and night. That's why it's so important that we memorize word. I remember in college, Dr. Chamberlain says, memorize. We hated it. Memorize the scriptures. But it has a benefit. When you memorize and you're in the ER and you don't have your Bible and you don't have your phone where you can look it up, because by, by that, if you're in the ER, you're so distraught, you don't you, you ain't looking at no Bible. Bring up the word. Bring up the word. I'm, I'm talking real life now. When you're in a situation, you ain't looking for no Bible. You ain't looking for no Bible. But wait a minute, get yourself together. Go in the bathroom, get yourself together and say, the word of God says on this situation, that he is, I am. And so, as I said, this week we're going to talk about all the scriptures. Go back to my I am book and bring them up. And we're going to talk about them every day, every day, until the situation has been resolved. And the miracle, whatever way God chooses, we accept. But we do know he going to live. Amen. Amen. Stay to your feet. If this ministry has been a blessing to you and you would like to sow a seed, you may do so by Cash App. Dollar sign R R M S A L I S B U R Y M D. 
or by mailing your seed to Rapture Ready Ministries, Incorporated, 368 Cary Avenue, Salisbury, Maryland, 21804. Also, please follow us on Facebook at Rapture Ready Ministries, Incorporated. May God's continuous blessings be with you and your family. Hello, I am Elder Dr. Sharon Washington. Our ministry is in the process of building a new sanctuary that will be a blessing for our growing congregation and community. To complete our new construction project, we are soliciting support from generous individuals, ministries, and businesses. There are several projects we have initiated to help generate funds, such as purchasing a leaf from our fundraising tree at $100 a leaf, or planting a seed offering of any amount. You may send your donation by cash app address, dollar sign, R-R-M-S-A-L-I-S-B-U-R-Y-M-D or by mailing your donation to Rapture Ready Ministries Incorporated, 368 Cary Avenue, Salisbury, Maryland, 21804. Thank you so much for your kind consideration and may God bless you abundantly.